Okay, I'm just giving myself a final idiot check. Checking the machine is tight where I'm expecting it to be tight and not tight where I'm not expecting it to be tight. going to make a couple of revolutions and just check that it's doing what I expect it to do. Last minute sanity check. Looks good so far. You can see that the cutter is actually aligned now so that it's between two teeth. I did this by rotating the workpiece until it was synced with the cutter because obviously the cutter is centered. So uh, I aligned the wheel and we can now make a cut. Okay, so we're homing in on the cuts to the actual workpiece now. I want to take another cut um, after I've made a small adjustment to the, to the cross slide, the upright slide. So because I don't want to reverse the rotation because that can affect the accuracy and I don't want to, I didn't start at zero <clears throat> for the first tooth that I cut. Uh, so I can't accurately remember uh, where my starting position was so I'm having to go all the way around to get back to the start but it's not that many teeth on the wheel so it's not hurting too much but it gives me a chance to demonstrate the process of moving between each tooth so we're doing one full revolution and dropping the pin down on this side of the sector then we're zeroing the sector and then we can do another revolution dropping down on the opposite side of the sector, zeroing again. So that's basically counting 30 teeth of the 32 teeth available on that ring.
Okay, I'm actually going to start with that one now. It's not actually the zero tooth, but it's the one before it. So I'll start with that because that means I'm up at zero and I know where I am this time. Before I actually move this, I'll bring you in a little bit closer just so that you can see the result of the cut. Okay, so I've got the strong lens on now. Let's see if I can just show you. So that's a section of the wheel that I haven't cut. And you can see that it's supported by the holder behind the tooth. If we come around, this is where the cut begins. Now, these were not actually, you can just make out actually the cutter was not actually quite touching the original part of the tooth it is just, just well barely kissing the side of it and we come around and this is where the repaired section begins so you can see that the the cut teeth are nigh on identical And in theory, because of the way that we've gone about cutting it using the shore blend, it's going to be pretty accurate. So I'm quite pleased with that as a repair. You can just make out the joint line there if you look for it. And probably as the brass tarnishes over time, it may become a little bit more visible. But uh, I'm not overly concerned by that. It's uh, part of its history now that it's had this repair and it has saved the original wheel, which is the important thing. So I'm pleased with that. So I'll take it off the holder now, and start looking at putting it back on its arbor. The fact that it was such a nice fit to the center on this arbor means that we stand a good chance of uh, having maintained concentricity. Okay, so just to round off this uh, little project, the last stage is to press on the uh, pinion into the wheel. I'm using my staking set to do this. too carried away because it's going in nice and tight again. I just want to check. 
that it's running concentrically. Before completely committing to uh, driving the wheel onto the arbor, I just wanted to check its concentricity. So I'm doing that in this little watchmaker's depthing tool. And I'm not sure if it'll come across on the camera very well, but I'm happy with that. It's uh, it's pretty concentric. You don't need to worry about it side to side at the moment because I haven't uh, I haven't actually uh, driven it all the way onto the arbor yet, so it's not going to be flat. But what I'm worried about is it being concentric. And it looks pretty good to me. So let's commit and drive it onto the arbor. Right, so the last step is probably the scariest of them all and that's where I'm just going to spin rivet the uh, the wheel onto the arbor just to tighten it up so what I've done is I've made up a a riveter here and if I get the camera around I might be able to show you the, the profile of it a little bit better okay so you can just see the uh, the end of the riveter there all it is is a piece of silver steel with a centre hole drilled out and then a slight chamfer and that's hardened and left dead hard and then uh, polished up and what I'm going to do is just uh, simply press the riveter up against the wheel while the lathe is rotating and it should just deform the uh, the brass of the wheel just that little bit that it spreads it into the uh, gaps in between the pinion leaves. So we'll put a little bit of cutting oil on just to help it along and prevent it from galling. And then go. Okay, so we finally finished up the wheel and you can see it's come out rather well. I'm always going to be able to spot the, um, the repair as you can see down at the bottom there. But as I said earlier, I'm pleased that it's a, uh, a suitable repair that it's managed to save the wheel. And it's going to be perfectly strong enough. I think it's a good repair all told. It was a lot of work for what it was, but that's often the case. In order to try and save an original part, you often have to spend uh, quite a lot more time than if you'd just um, scrapped it and made a new one. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed following me along for that little repair. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video.